You know, there's a lady out there who I admire immensely. She uh, she takes life, and she really runs with it. And uh, she grew up, it was a very tough life. And she, she's followed the American dream. And I would be so thrilled if she could become a member of the House of Representatives. Star Parker, how are you? I'm doing good, Mark. Very, very well. And unfortunately, though, I didn't always follow the American dream. In fact, yeah, but I you're there now, the kid. Left. I'm there now, but I believe their lie. I thought poor people were poor because rich people were rich, and my life wandered in and out of meaninglessness for seven years in welfare. I know, but you know, uh, you're, that is exactly why we need you in the House, because you can stand <laughs> up to these liberals and you can explain to them, I was where you were 20 years ago, or whatever it was, yeah. and I'm here today to tell you to stop it. A little bit longer than that, but you're right. My life story embodies the greatness of America, that it is exceptional that anybody from any background or ethnicity, if they need to get a fresh start, they can still excel, they can prosper, but you're absolutely right. I think that it's time to uh, break the liberal stronghold that they've had. In fact, people are asking me why I challenged Laura Richardson. I said there are four reasons, but the first reason is that we really do need to do something about the political insanity that has gripped these poor communities for 40 years, and now it's spreading into the rest of the country. And, you know, this is a, it's a tough district, but, you know, an awful lot of hardworking people in this district. Tell us a little bit about this district. Well, it is. It's the 37th Congressional in Los Angeles County, so it's the lower part of Los Angeles County. It includes the whole city of Compton, all of Carson, all of Signal Hill, um, more than half of Long Beach, which is uh, where the most of the people live, um, Dominguez Hills, uh, some of Wilmington. You know how they draw these lines. I mean, oh, in fact, yeah. I have an invisible Berlin Wall right down Long Beach, <laughs> you know, and they pull the healthy part out, and then they keep the rest wondering uh, how they're going to get along with each other while these political insiders keep promising them other results than they're getting. Their families yeah. are collapsing. Their neighborhoods are crumbling. Their schools are underperforming, and their unemployment rate, you talk about soaring in the country, mine are at 22% in Jeez. this district. Yeah, that's... And uh, do people understand that a lot of these politicians are part of the problem, like uh, like Richardson? I think they're beginning to understand it. She's left a real distaste in the mouth of many of the voters, and especially those that are uh, losing their homes because they didn't know a bank lobbyist to call and get her house back when it fell into foreclosure. Now, let me stop you right there. She has been, in fact, in ethics trouble for every, every, since she walked into the House of Representatives, hasn't she? Well, yeah, she was, it seemed like she was a race to the bottom because the first year she got there, she's only been there three years, and the first two years she certainly did make the, um, the list of the most corrupt uh, because she's been a political insider and climber for an awful long time, uh, 10 years total, but she did move in one year from city council to assembly, from assembly to Congress, so she had to step on a lot of people and do a lot of things to get there. Uh, and, you know, but it's not even about her personal life as much as it is about her professional life. Laura Richardson is a boilerplate liberal, and if she continues to represent this district, she is still going to bring the same bankrupt big government ideas and more relativism that has already destroyed every inner city in this country. So what this district needs is somebody willing to be honest with them about what it really takes to build prosperity for themselves and for their, for their families and for their children. And they're resonating. I am making a lot of headway in this district, and it looks like we might have a a surprise on uh, November the 2nd. Now, do you have enough money to run ads or to do whatever you need to do? Yeah, we are. When I first went to the NRCC and said, what does it take to take on a district like this? They said, you need four things. You need a message. I said, my life story is my message. They said, well, then you need management. So I went on to hire good management. They said, you need manpower. So I called my friends, and they started rallying folks, and we have a lot of volunteers on the phone all the time and out in the streets. And they said, you need money. And I said, well, how much? They said, $1.2 million. And then I found out all about the campaign finance laws. You know, this is my first time going inside. Yeah. So you start looking at all the science behind the art of uh, the, or shall I say, the business of politics. So I had to go knocking on doors, and yeah, we raised the 1.2 million. Uh, what we're looking for now is another 50, 60 thousand, so we can do some last-minute advertising. Because what my opponent, Laura Richardson, is now doing, she's like an alley cat in a corner. So she's starting to pull my life story apart and just throw little p bits and pieces out there, uh, so that they, she can confuse voters. We are winning even in our harder-hit neighborhoods. Uh, so I would like to do a couple more ads and a couple more mailers. Yeah. Well, folks, this is Star Parker. You've probably read her magnificent columns on Town Hall and other places. Uh, she is solid. She's a constitutionalist. Uh, she is 
living the American dream. As a matter of fact, she's talking about the American dream all the time, trying to give people hope in a different direction, and I think we ought to try and help her. It's Star Parker, just like it sounds, StarParkerForCongress.com, StarParkerForCongress.com. I will put this on my website and on my social sites. Now, you know, the funny thing about uh, these liberal policies, they affect everybody. I don't care what color you are, how tall you are, what your sexual preference is, or any of the rest of it. And uh, they don't have a way out the left. They want to keep spending and taxing and therefore destroying jobs and pushing businesses out, right? And we have already seen the damage that these ideas do, and I think that that's why the American people are rallying, saying we don't want this, because we can look into any inner city and see where we're going as a country. You know, my district is already government dependent, and our workers are union dependent. And the problem with these types of dependencies is that when the private sector collapses, the dependent get hit the hardest. So the tax revenues have stalled. So we're starting to see all of the cutbacks here. Our teachers are getting pink slips. The food lines are getting longer. More people are losing their home. Rent's going up. The, the detached are getting desperate, so crime's going up. No, this is what we have to stop in the rest of the country. We have an example of what liberalism does, what secular social, socialism will do uh, to a people. We can look in a black community. You know, it's underappreciated, Mark, how healthy black family life was before they started this social engineering in the 60s. We were at then at 22 percent out of wedlock birth rates. Today we're at 72 percent. So the family collapsed, which collapsed the economic engine of the community, and that's why we now have what we call the tragedy of the commons. No one owns it, so no one takes care of it. And it's happening to the rest of the country already. What this administration is doing is putting on steroids, because when you think about the white um, out of wedlock birth rate during those same 60s, it was at 3 percent. Today it's at 33 percent. We cannot continue on the way that we're going right now, which is one of the reasons that I'm running. I decided when the Los Angeles County Republican Party asked me to consider coming back home and fighting for freedom from the inside, I made a decision that I was going to do this, mostly because I think we're at that critical point, just like the 1850s, to where we cannot go on like this. We're going to be all one or we're going to be all the other. We're going to be all slave or we're going to be all free, but we can no longer be both. Wow. All I can say is you're one of the most articulate people I've ever had on this program. What do you think of that? Well, I think that you're going to get some phone calls from some of the others that are also my friends. <laughs> that uh, you've had on this program. Don't <laughs> worry, I, I know how to cut them I've been them working off. on this a long time. You know my story, and you know that I want to fight uh, for good quality leadership that will put the, the brakes on these entitlement programs. We are bankrupt, and I have a grandson. I don't want this type of future for him. I've worked too hard. And yet, when we look at officials like Laura Richardson, it's the same agenda that they've had for the last 50 years, more government. This is the answer liberals give us every single time that they're in charge. No, we need leaders in Washington who understand economics and that can use that understanding to shape public policy so we can attract business investment and entrepreneurs. Well, I have a heart and passion for business. That's why I'm running. I not only have a degree in marketing and international business minor, but I've been an entrepreneur for 25 years. I still make payroll. And I had to remind Laura Richardson, I also pay my mortgages. You know, when you think about what has broken down in these communities, not just my own, which is hard hit, and I'm looking so forward to being the leader here so we can model some of my new ideas across the country and other inner cities. But what these districts have needed, every Congressional Black Caucus district in this country, is somebody that really cares about them. You know, mm -hmm. blacks know things are not working well. You saw what happened when Bill Cosby talked about it. People rallied him. They wanted to hear more and they wanted to know what to do. It was the black left that shut him up. It was the black political establishment that quieted him down. So we have to take a hold of this and the wind is behind our sale this election cycle to at least try. I didn't want to wake up November 3rd and say, why didn't I at least not try? So that's what we're doing. We've mounted a very aggressive campaign and I'm hoping that on November the, the 3rd, I am a congressional leader uh, sitting in Washington, D.C., trying to bring about some real change, strengthening our nonprofits with charity tax credits, fighting every obstacle standing in the way of these kids getting quality schools by allowing money to follow children to the schools their parents Amen want. Amen to that. That, you know, these are the answers. We know they're the answers, and every voucher model in this country, I think all 13 of them, are working very successfully. They are not bankrupting the public school. They're strengthening the public schools, as we started to see in Washington, D.C., before this administration pulled the plug on the voucher program there. So what we have to do is get leaders in Washington who understand these practical ideas, the ideas that are rooted in our foundation, freedom and personal responsibility. That's what the founding of this country is about. That's why it prospered, and we have to get back on that track if we're going to be the light for the rest of the world. 
Well, you are a light, and I really appreciate you coming on. Ladies and gentlemen, let's help Star Parker. You know, she's uh, she really is a terrific voice. Star Parker for Congress.com. Star Parker, God bless you, my friend, and good luck to you. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, they can get me Star Parker for Congress.com, and if they do help me, they might not be able to vote for me, but I'll vote for them when I get to Congress because I'm voting for freedom. There you go. All right, God bless. Thanks. Take care now.